Slating, slating. This is Eye on the Media, Business and the Press for air December 25th, take one. This broadcast was taped last month. It has been edited, but edited in sequence. The moderator is Law Professor Charles Nesson of Harvard. He will begin in a moment. This is a CBS News special. Eye on the Media, Business and the Press. Mr. Glauber, you get a telephone call. It comes from an acquaintance of yours who uh, works for the Environmental Protection Agency. He says to you, uh, Steve, I think, there's a, I think there's something you guys might be interested in. I think the investigative hour might like to do a program on space heaters. You know, they're selling like hotcakes. They're, they're just a hot product. A lot of people are buying space heaters. And there's been some serious question raised as to whether they're dangerous. I think there's a story in it. What's more, one of the reasons I think so is a guy called me up who works for Zuber. You know, they're the biggest manufacturer. And he told me that Zuber is fudging some of the data on the safety statistics. And I think he'd talk to you. Is that interesting to you? You bet. What's going on in your mind? Are you, you, are you saying to yourself, maybe there's going to be a program here? Yes, sir. At this point, are you on your own? Um, for the, if I'm going to go out there, I will first check with the correspondent with whom I work, who's Mike Wallace. Maybe talk to Don Hewitt if I see Don, who's our exec producer. What do you mean, check with Mike Wallace? Um, go check it with me. He's right there. Mike got a phone call as follows, and I go through the phone call. This is just an advice thing. This is just check in with, check in with. Yes. With Wallace. Informal, colleague to colleague conversation. You want to make sure that he likes it, okay? I want to make sure he doesn't hate it. Uh, if he, I want to make sure he's interested. <laughs> and wants, I want to come back and hear that Mike thinks it's just a terrible idea. <laughs> what do you say to him, Mr. Wallace? It sounds like a wonderful story. All right, Mr. Uh, Glauber, you're in pretty good shape. You've got it through Mr. Wallace so far. What's your next step? Go see the person Zuber. Go check, perhaps, the Consumer Product Safety Commission if they've done any tests. Check let's, uh, let's fire start, administration. Let's, st let's stop with the fellow with Zuber, OK? OK. Here I am. Hi, Mr. Glauber. How are you doing? Terrific. Glad that you could see me. You're uh, from the investigative hour, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not sure I want to talk to you. Well, either, uh, your friend who said I could use his name uh, said that you had some documents, you had some leads, you had some information about uh, the safety aspects of kerosene heaters, and I'm here to try to find out as best I can uh, what the uh, problems might be. I tell you, this is a real problem, this business with the space eaters. And I care a lot about it. But um, I'm not working. I could use a little money. If I'm going to help you, it's going to take time. It's going to take effort. You're going to be drawing on my knowledge of this business. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you people, you people sell your advertising for a lot of money. How about it? I would be rightfully I could rightfully go to our standards. I'm very sorry. Uh, we cannot pay sources. I didn't say anything about being a source. I'm just going to help you. You mean you can't pay somebody who helps you put together a story? Uh, we do occasionally, as I understand, to pay reporters uh, who are not themselves interested in, have no self-interest in the project, occasionally pay them, though I've never been involved in a project that's done that. I don't want to be a reporter. I'd sort of like to be a consultant. How about that? A consultant. 
consultant to the project. Well, I think we're going down the road a little bit too much on consultancies and, uh, and fees. And I came out of information. And why don't we first talk a little bit about that, and we'll get the other stuff later. Mr. Wallace, you got any problem with him talking to me as a consultant? No, but I'd want to talk to Hewitt and Koloff about it. You happen to have at the table the four fellows, four of the five fellows, who make those determinations. How about it, Mr. Hewitt? No way. No way? No way. Why no way? A guy called Steve and said there's a guy at this company who feels very strongly that there are unsafe space heaters out in the country killing people. You yourself said to Steve, you care a lot about space heaters. You care about $5,000 worth in your pocket about space heaters. You don't care about space heaters. You're looking for a job. And I'm, I'm wary of you from what I've learned from Steve and Mike. Tell me what's bothering you, Mr. Hewitt. It's clearly not the money, is it? I mean, you've got plenty of money to spend. Oh, yeah, it is the money. It's the it principle the money. of the money, sure. I'm not understanding what you're worried about, Mr. Hewitt. Is it the pay for information, or is that somebody is going to say that you pay for information? One day, we'll find out that anything we want to find out, some guy's got his hand out. He said, hey, you paid the guy from the kerosene company. I'm not going to talk to you unless you pay me. And then you end up paying everybody in the country. Who knows that? Everybody's selling information everywhere. It's a, it's a bad practice to start. I want to know when you think it's legit to pay somebody and when you don't. Tell me. I think that when it's a big enough story that somebody has some expertise that we need and want and can act as a consultant and guide us, it, it is not out of the realm of possibility that you would put him on the payroll for a limited amount of time to guide you in areas that you know nothing about if you know enough about his credentials and you know enough about the guy and he isn't just some guy who got fired who is looking to make a, some fast money. And you could use that person, then, as a basis for testing ideas against, <laughs> making suggestions where to go, mm -hmm. how to set sure. things up. But not put them on the air. Not put them on the air? No. Not if you're paying them. You can't, I, I don't think he can be a, an interview subject uh, if you're paying him, unless you tell the audience that this man is on our payroll and this man we're talking to is on our payroll. But that's not a good idea. You can use him as sources, but I don't think he should be a principal in the story. I, out there in TV viewer land, would love to hear from this guy. Why isn't he the best person for you to be putting on the air? Well, in certain cases, we might. I think you ought to talk to Mr. Koloff, because there, there's, a, there's a management uh, <laughs> standards problem here on when people who are paid as consultants can appear on the air and when they can't. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why suddenly you want me to talk to Koloff? Because <laughs> he gets paid to do that. <laughs> the buck passes to you, Mr. Koloff. Thanks to Mr. Hewitt. Any, Literally the buck. Done. Literally the buck. <laughs> Make it simple for me. I'm out there in TV land. I'm trying to understand space heaters. I'm trying to figure out whether I want to buy one. And then Mr. Hewitt's going to put on a program that's going to educate me a little bit about space heaters. And the question that he's stopped on is whether he's going to put on air the best expert he could find, so good that he's ready to pay him for his help. And apparently, he thinks there's a problem in putting that expert on the air, mm -hmm. just because he's paid him. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. We do not want to get ourselves in situations in which it appears, whether or not there is, some type of, of conflict, that is, that we had paid for information and a person who subsequently appeared on air. Because it puts a cloud in the mind of the viewer. You it's don't want to appear to have done something wrong, Correct. even though you haven't done anything wrong. Correct. Mr. Hewitt, why did you pass it over to Mr. Colo? Because when it comes to, to paying 
consultants or information. That's a, a management decision. All right, let me, I think let, you're making a basic no, no, mistake. No, no, no. You think we're a consumer group. We're not. We're a news organization. We're covering a news story. We're not out there. You know, we're not, we, we don't have any mandate to be the consumer's friend or to, to be a testing laboratory. Or we're not, you know, we, it's a news story. You're running a news organization. That's the way you see yourself. Mm -hmm. And you've got a guy who's got great information. Management's got an appearance problem. They've got they're an appearance problem. They're going to keep him off because they don't want a cloud. They don't want a cloud. Nobody wants a cloud. See, so credibility so, counts more than the story. How. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Rivera, what's his problem? I believe <coughs> his problem is that uh, several years ago, the broadcast journalists industry particularly began a period of masochistic self-inspection. And masochistic self-inspection. His, his problem Gee, is we've, great. we've write gone, that down, write that down, write that down. We've gone beyond, beyond the bounds even of our own need to be ethical, and uh, we are very concerned that others in our extremely competitive business will interpret for their own good uh, and act as innocuous as paying someone with very valuable information. We call him a consultant, but you're actually buying his information, whether we call it his service or not. We go through the stance, but that's another function of this whole process. Uh, the second point I'd like to make is the reason he called Koloff is that when you enter into these gray areas, areas that have only become gray in recent years, the uh, thing to the prudent thing to do is to wrap yourself in the mantle of the corporation, the multinational, multi billion dollar corporation for which you work. Why put your own individual career on the line when you can say it's not me making this decision, it's ABC News or indeed ABC Inc. making this decision. Oh, I see. So when we I get past I mean, the... I mean, Hewitt uh, knows exactly what he's doing I by passing the buck over here to Cola. I believe that... Uh, uh, he's, he's young, he's good looking, he's expendable. Uh, <laughs> em emphasis on the expendable. <laughs>